All right, we've talked about the uh, single charlatan issue, and now it's time to move on to the multiple problems. So that, that single charlatan question was, was the problem of setting up a test that uh, tells us whether or not we should be able to hire a stockbroker. Um, and in particular, the takeaway there is that this test will make mistakes uh, with some probability, and, and that's a controllable probability. So one question for you is how we might make this search process uh, for a broker more efficient than we've already presented. And the reality is we might uh, interview one broker uh, and have to make a decision and then we go on to the next broker and the next broker. And, um, and the answer is rather than doing this search serially, let's do this in, in parallel. So, so we're gonna test uh, K brokers at once uh, each broker gets the same set of stocks to judge. And, and then uh, the algorithm is that we're going to choose the broker with the highest accuracy. Um, however, we have this criterion that uh, this broker must uh, also have a key value. So something, let's say, uh, less than 05. So the question is, what's the probability that we've actually made a mistake in this process? And and so first off, we need to, to answer the question of what is our null hypothesis? And that hy null hypothesis is that all of the stockbrokers are charlatans. And the question we need to answer is, what's the probability that we're still going to accept one of these charlatans as our stockbroker? Okay, so, so we have this, this symbol alpha, and this is the, uh, the point that we reject okay so no hypothesis so that's the the probability that we reject um, one minus alpha this is the probability uh, that we don't don't reject. And the, the next question is, uh, what's the probability of none of the charlatans rejecting the null hypothesis? Okay, so we have a total of k of those. So the probability of uh, no charlatans is 1 minus alpha to the k. So this is a probability uh, that uh, We don't reject for all charlatans. So we're assuming that our charlatans are independent here. So, so these first two measures, the alpha and the one minus alpha, these are with respect to individual charlatans. Uh, and then when we uh, ask what the aggregate event is of, uh, uh, of, uh, not rejecting all of the charlatans. That's this probability right here. All right, and then the final thing is that we want to we want to know what's the probability uh, that we uh, reject at least one. And, and when I say the probability that we reject at least one charlatan, what we mean by this is we're rejecting the null hypothesis for that charlatan, so we're accepting that, that charlatan as a stockbroker. And, and that's just the complement of what we have just above. So that's one minus, one minus alpha to the K. Okay, so then the question is, what kinds of values do we end up with? So if uh, so, I'm going to call I'm going to call this quantity here. I'm going to call this alpha ag for aggregate. So this is the uh, aggregate. Uh, this is the aggregate event, and and so the question is, if we make a certain choice for alpha, what is alpha ag? 
So the question we want to answer is that if we make a choice of say alpha equals 0.05 for different choices of n, what is what is alpha ag? So for for n equals two, alpha ag is uh, 0.0975. So, so what this means is if I have two uh, charlatans and I, I would, I, and I'm judging each of them based on this zero point zero five criteria, the uh, probability of uh, incorrectly rejecting at least one of those two is 0.0975. So that's a pretty big jump. That's almost a factor of two uh, there with with three charlatans, this number goes to one, four, two, six. With five, it goes to 0.2262. With 10, it goes to 0.4. And with 20, this number goes to 0.64. So if I have 20 charlatans and I and if I look at them individually and judge them based on this 0.05 criteria, so, so they uh, achieve a p-value that is something smaller than 0.05 and, and I accept one of them, the probability of me making an error of incorrectly accepting a, one of the charlatans is 0.64, which is a huge number, uh, e even though I'm, I'm only dealing with a, a relatively small uh, uh, number of charlatans. So I've gone from wanting to have this criterion of, of 0.05 and it becoming, in the aggregate, becoming 0.64. Okay, so, so what we really want to be able to do here is, is set alpha aggregate to something and then, and then compute what our alpha is for the individual tests. So that's just a little bit of uh, algebra. So this is alpha ag is uh, one minus one minus alpha to the k. So we can we can rearrange this, and uh, and it becomes alpha is equal to one minus one minus alpha ag to the one over k. So again, this this gives us a means of saying. I want my aggregate decision to be correct with some probability. Uh, and, and this will tell me how I can judge the individual uh, brokers. So, so under these conditions, so let's assume alpha ag is equal to 0.05. Question is, what is alpha under different ends? So n of uh, 2, alpha is 0.025. So, so what this means is if I have two charlatans and I require a p-value that is for individually for them of 0.025, then that means that with only 5% probability, I will uh, reject the aggregate null hypothesis that uh, all of them are charlatans. Okay, so now what happens as n starts to get larger. So 3 becomes 0 0.0169, 5 becomes 0 0.0102, 10 becomes 0 0.005116, and 20 becomes 0 0.00256. Okay, so by the time we hit 20 here, if I want to maintain an aggregate uh, error rate of only 5%, then I have to require that uh, a stock, an individual stockbroker that I, uh, that I uh, choose, I, I reject the hypothesis that, that the stockbroker is a charlatan and, and then choose to, to keep that stockbroker, my P, my P has to be something uh, less than or equal to uh, 0.00256, which is a really 
uh, a really strict criterion. Okay, so, so this is one way, this is, this is called correction of our alpha. Uh, this is one way to correct our alpha and this particular approach, this is called SIDEC correction. Oops, there's a K on the end. This is SIDEC correction. And if I have uh, n different models and I want to make a conclusion that uh, one of them is good enough, then this tells me what my alpha ought to be. Um, another type of correction that you will also see out in the literature is called Bonferroni. And that is, and that is where we set alpha to be equal to alpha ag over k. And this is probably the more typical one that you're going to see. Um, it's a little bit quicker to, to compute what alpha should be. Um, but actually, if you, if you look at uh, the range of alphas that we really uh, care about in that 0.05 range, uh, the alpha ags of 0.05 and the kinds of k's that we're dealing with, 5, 10, 20, um, the SIDEC correction and Bonferroni correction actually give us the same answer. So, so another term for this broker problem or having the multiple sets of hyperparameters um, is the multiple comparisons problem. And fundamentally what it's coming from is the fact that we're we're taking a sample and comparing it against uh, other m multiple other samples. And when we do this, this dilutes the power of the individual comparisons. And, and as you can see, it dilutes it pretty uh, substantially. Really, our, our options for addressing this is to correct uh, the alpha, as, as we've talked about uh, uh, in the writing. So SIDEC correction and Bonfroni correction are the, the two uh, procedures for uh, doing this. Um, as I said, this is a, these are both very conservative approaches, but they are very uh, effective. The other possibility is, is that once we've selected the best of a set of things, then we go out back out to uh, the world, draw some new data and, uh, and use that, those samples to make our final comparisons that we have to make. And, and how that plays out in the, in the context of the, the stockbroker uh, context is that we've got our K stockbrokers, they each get tested, we select the best performing one, uh, and then we uh, do a new test on just the winning stockbroker. So, so we select a new set of stocks that are independent of the ones that we just tested the, the broker on. We ask them to make another prediction for a week out. And, and if that individual stockbroker then satisfies an alpha of uh, 0.05, then, then we'll select that, that broker as, as our broker. So how this plays out in this question of hyperparameters and model types and how to select each of these, um, we really see this as a multi-level question. Uh, for, for a given model type, we first need to know what our best choice is for the hyperparameter set. And this kind of a question, depending upon the type of model, can involve a huge number of comparisons. So, we, so this, is, this is the place where we have to be really very cautious. Uh, and, and then after this uh, step, so now every model type has its own best hyperparameter set, then we can go about in, engaging our statistical processes uh, to compare our model types. And the typical approach in, in dealing with the, this multiple level problem is to use different data sets uh, for these two models for the evaluation process. Okay, so I've been throwing around these terms for these data sets and, and now here's this is the full context uh, for these. So our validation data set, we're going to use this as uh, a means of selecting our hyperparameters. And then the test data, 
now, now that we're down to a place where we're making a small number of comparisons, so uh, just a, a handful, four or five different models, um, we can, uh, we, we, we use uh, for that comparison process an independent data set, which we call the test data set. Okay, so we're, we're gonna pull uh, all of this together in, down to uh, an implementation here in a little bit. Um, but first, I, I wanna focus on this very first step of uh, dealing with the hyperparameter selection question. So that's up next.